Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. We are back on the sizzling KSM show, and today is going to be even more sizzling. All right. Well, coming up next is I'm sure you know him, but uh, in Ghana it, we have our own version of David and Goliath. Show some love, man. <laughs> I'm sure you know what I mean. You know, when small boy David, you know, went and uh, sort of stopped Goliath. We have our own version in Ghana, you know, where this small boy is not very small anyway, you know. He's, uh, he's, he's very nicely looking man called Sam George, and uh, he had the nerve and audacity to say, Charlie, uh, E.T., I go stop you. <laughs> it is a queer me. I was like, eh, bo, you get my stop, bo. Show some love, man. <laughs> well, we're going to have some fun. I got Sam George here. Put your hands together. Let's welcome Sam George. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Welcome, Sam, man. Thank you, man. Have a seat, man. Oh, we're going to have fun, and Sam is in the house. We're going to talk about all the, everything exciting. Stick around. We'll be right back. We're back. So welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. How are you doing? By divine selection and providence, I'm alive. Oh, my goodness. Divine who? Selection and providence. Selection and providence. The big man up there does a selection every morning. Oh, wow. You make their life team or the death team. <laughs> Put your hands together, man. Sam, but uh, you know, I was you know, like, like joke, like joke. I was saying David and Goliath, man. I mean, E.T., who is my friend, that, that's a giant. He's a colossus. E.T. is a giant, man. Yes. And yeah, he, I mean, he's held the uh, Ningo Pram Pram, if I'm kidding. Yes. Yeah. And how were you so confident, even the idea that you have to go up against him? Did you think it, it was time for him to leave? What was your motivation? Well, um, I'm sure my roommate, if he's watching this show, would testify to this in tech. In 2003, in my third year in the university, I said to him that in 2016, I was going to go to parliament. That's what you said? Yes, in 2003. I said to him that I'd planned my life, and as far as I was concerned, by 2016, I'd have put myself in a position to lead my people in parliament. Really? We thought it was a joke, but wow. I was serious about it. And so we worked towards it. Um, I'm a very deeply spiritual person. Forget the, the <laughs> loudness in politics, but I'm deeply spiritual. And when um, you say deeply spiritual, meaning? I'm, I'm not a religious person who just goes okay. to church. Okay. I, I have a personal relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hmm. And so I prayed and asked him and said, he should give me a sign. He should speak to me and let me know if this battle I was going in, I could win. Because my wife said to me before, when I told her I was going to do it, she said, look, are you, if you're are you? going in, make sure you don't lose. If you lose, don't come home. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, I asked God, I said, look, will I, will I, will I succeed? He gave me Proverbs 2131. And so my first posters that came out had Proverbs 2131 on it, which, which says that the horses and chariots are prepared for battle, but victory will come from God. And I asked him to give me assurances of it. And believe me, two days, within two days, four people from the four corners of my constituency called me and said, we were praying. And we're in praying for you. But this is what we had, Proverbs 21, 31. We don't know what it means, but this is for you. For real? Yes. And so in, in the face of all the challenges, I knew that God had spoken. Nobody challenges him. And that gave me confidence. Wow. Yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't any scientific analysis you had done and, and seen that maybe the, the trend was changing. So maybe a more youthful person would be more vibrant, but it was just... Quotations? Not what? just quotations. I mean, that, that was what gave me the conviction to go in. Once I had the conviction to go in, I had to sit down and do the, the, the scientific calculations. I'm, I'm an engineer by training. And so for me, it's, it's about making sure that it fits into the parameters and the formulas. And so we sat down and looked at the trend. We had been part of the 2012 campaign in the constituency. I knew what the challenges were. I knew what had made the NPP parliamentary candidate do so well against the NDC's candidate, Honorable E.T. Benta, even though the presidential had not done so well. Mm. And so we looked, at the, we looked at the figures, pulling station by pulling station, electoral area by electoral area. We worked out our permutations. We couched our message to suit what the people wanted to hear. Mm. But then our message is one I know I can deliver on. And, and I think it worked for us. What so, was the message? Well, my message was just twofold. Uh, job creation for the youth and then education. 
I, I said to them that, look, um, when I spoke about job creation, it wasn't just about creating jobs and just saying it for saying sake, but I'll be held accountable to it. I told them, don't hold me accountable for the number of school buildings I put up or the number of roads I'm able to lobby to get done by central government. Hold me accountable in four years' time if I come for re-election on the number of jobs I've been able to create and the number of people I've been able to support in, in second and tertiary education. Those are the two parameters I asked my people to hold me accountable for. I said to them we have over 10,000 acres of arable land in the constituency. We've spoken to the traditional council. They're willing to support the youth with that. If we, we, can, we can transform Ningo Pram Pram into the, the raw material base for our alcoholic beverage industry. A number of alcoholic beverages today in this country are produced from a species of cassava. There's not enough supply on the local market. And so the likes of Guinness and ABC have to go to Burkina Faso and uh, Ivory Coast to source this material. I told the gentlemen and ladies in the constituency, we, don't need all, we all don't need to be in white collar employment. I'm an agri engineer by profession. Let me use my work. Let's farm. Let's supply Guinness. Let's supply ABC. Let's give them the raw material. It's possible. They bought into it and they believe in me, and I will not let them down. Mm. And then when, yeah, definitely, KSM. And, and on education, I said to them that my MP's Common Fund is going to be dedicated to education, and that I'm going to be holding town hall meetings every year with the constituents and accounting to them on how much I received as my share of the District Assembly's Common Fund as an MP's Common Fund, and how what percentage of it has gone into scholarships. There are going to be names and the family recipients of those scholarships will be present for the people to know that, okay, he got X amount, he spent Y out of that on scholarships, and he's not just telling you he spent it on scholarships. These are the people. These are the schools. When we pay this, uh, the schools, when, when schools are paid through an MP's Common Fund, there should be a receipt to show. I would make this available to my people. I, I believe so, so much So these are the in grants you campaigned on? Justice too. These specific? Basically. Those are the two things I told my people. Hmm. And they trusted me. Wow. Now, this is the question. So let's say you get into parliament and it doesn't happen for some strange reason. I don't know. Budget, whatever. Money that you're expecting, your common fund doesn't come through and things like that. Do you go back and re-explain or you're very dead sure that everything you've said can be delivered? I could have promised them a new district hospital, which is something we need. But I'm not sure about the budget lines for that. And so I didn't promise them that, even though I will work to get that for them. I promised them things I know I can deliver on. I know that to get the farm going, or the, 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 the cassava plantation going, we need to get access to the land, which I've, I've worked on already. We need to have an agreement with Guinness, which I've started speaking to contacts there. So that, for me, is something I can deliver on. I don't need a budget line for that. Second thing I promised, scholarships. In four years, and I'm confident President Muhammad is going to be president between 7th of January 2017 and 6th of January 2021. What if he isn't? Well, I'm confident about that. What I have no doubt. Yes, I'm, I'm confident in my mind about it. So I'm not even going to entertain the, op the, the, the opposite. But, but whoever, but, whoever but, is president... Don't you always have a backup? Say he isn't, then um, what? You go back to your continents well, and you win. Un un and you say, well, that, uh, unfortunately, my faith is so strong it has no backup. Because that's actually faith. Really? Absolute faith. Because I, I went into this election not expecting to lose. And so I'm going into this election confident that President Mahama will win. But then the bottom line is whoever is president, mm -hmm. in any case, there is no president who will go four years and not pay district assemblies common fund. Mm. It may delay. It could be in arrears for even up to a year. But then in four years, I will get a certain amount of money as part of my MP's common fund. If I get one CD, I will account for that one CD. If I was expecting 100 CDs so that I could give scholarship to 100 students and I got only 10 CDs. They would give to 10 students. to 10 students. The bottom line is I will account. That's one thing my people said to me, that they are yet to see true accountability for what has happened over the years. And I promised them that I will account. I won't fail them. And they believed you? Yes, because... And they elected you? Yes. So now you have to deliver? Absolutely. I have no, I have no options. <laughs> the same way my wife said to me, don't come home. It's the same way my people have told me, don't come back for every election if you don't deliver. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. Wow. Wow. How did you get so much into... Were you always interested in politics? Even from school, back in the day? I mean, huh. what's your history with politics that... Pretty, pretty, pretty tricky question. You know... Way back in the university, I actually joined the cadet. I actually ended up as the quartermaster for the university hall cadet. That's Katanga Hall cadet. And we call ourselves the Catalians. And 
back then, I wanted to go into the army. I was pretty young when I went to the university. I, I had a dream of going into the army and staging a coup mm. because I wanted to be like Jerry Rawlings. <laughs> and so I dollarized the man, you know. And so that was actually my mentality. And I made a mistake, in quotes, of saying this to my mother. And so after I finished the university and myself and three friends bought the military forms, my mother told me, you won't go to the army. <laughs> that's happened, I didn't end up in the army. Maybe so you're actually following up on the dream? Um, well, uh, if, if you had bought the, well, the forms? I, I'd have grown older and realized <laughs> my, my, my youth is free. <laughs> but, but then, you know, um, in 2008, I was doing my national service in the office of the late Aliou Mahama. Mm. And I met Honorable E.T. Menta in the VIP lounge of the Accra Sports Stadium during the 2008 opening mm -hmm. ceremony. Mm -hmm. And I walked up to him, introduced myself to him, and reminded him of encounters he had had with my dad and my uncle mm. in the constituency and introduced myself to him. He said, yes, he did re remember my parents, my dad and my uncle. And so I said to him that, well, I would, I'm, I'm learning this game. I'm coming into the political foray. And so I would love to learn at the feet of masters. You're one of such people as my MP. And he said, well, I should keep getting in touch. And so I kept getting in touch. I learned from people like him other senior people have been, have been blessed to learn from other senior people. So E.T. Mesa was one of your mentors, if you will? Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. I learned a lot from him. I learned how to do things and how not to do things. Positive and negatives, I learned from every single one of them. And you were working in the uh, vice president's office, Ali Mohammed? Yes, I was doing my national service at the time. I did my national service from between September, August 2007 to August or June, July there about 2008, after which we finished our national service and then I got myself involved in a number of things. I, I was doing ICT at the time, went into a couple of consultancy for ICM, World Bank related projects and UNDP projects in Ghana. Uh, I did that for about two years, till about 2010, when um, the political thing had become very, very entrenched and I started doing TV and radio programs and then the talk about being a politically exposed person came and you know these agencies, the World Bank UNDP projects, they want to shy away from politically exposed people and so that ended my romance with those two Britain Wood institutions and their agent, the projects we were doing here in Ghana. And then uh, the choice you made, you decided you Yes, I, I, in 2010 I decided that look okay, um, it looks like this is something I'm, I, I have to do. And I'd planned to do, to represent my people in 2016. I'd been learning, and I said to myself that, okay, take it full hog. I mean, if you want to learn, you have to commit yourself to it. And so I committed myself to it. Uh, I'll say five, five years down the line, I'm parliamentary candidate. It's, it's been a rough <laughs> ride. <laughs> yeah, here's the question, you know, and I'm sure you've heard it, you know, because, uh, it's politics, sure. and sometimes it does get hostile. Needlessly so, I would think, but it does. Sure. And it's almost as part of the game. Because um, you and E.T. went at each other for a while. And here's somebody that you say you learn from, is a mentor. But can you decide that, well, I'm not going to politics, and this is the game, so the rules must change? What happened? Well, Kirsten, I, I, I believe that the politics of this country needs to be purged. And I speak to a couple of friends of mine. I have fantastic friends in the MPP, young guys like me, who are also making great strides in the MPP. And when we meet, I say to them that, look, we, we need to build our democracy to a place where we can disagree on policy and issues, but not yeah. attack our personalities. Yeah. And, 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 and I mean, in this short period of being in this game, I've been the recipient of setting vicious attacks. My wife has been attacked and on social media and all. And it's taken intervention of some of these young guys in the NPP to call their own people to order and say, look, his wife is not a politician. He's a politician. So attack him and not his wife. But I, I must say that as a young man, I have made mistakes in this game. I've made comments which, with the benefit of hindsight, if I had to relieve the years, I mean, I've chosen my words differently. Yeah. And so for me, I'm, I'm a work in progress. That's how I see myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the other day I was telling a friend that um, I chose a career path where every day I go to work, my work is before the cameras and as a communications mm -hmm. person is before cameras and I'm speaking to 26 million Ghanaians. My colleagues who choose to go into the bank and into private sector, they also make mistakes. I mean, they make wrong transactions. They're called before boards and sanctioned. Mm -hmm. When I make a mistake, 
It's before the whole world. Mm -hmm. It's not behind a closed door yeah. of a boardroom. Yeah. And so the stakes are extremely high for us. But Ghanaians just need to understand that across board, as young men and women in this game, we will make mistakes. And I am one person who will not run away or shy away from admitting my mistakes. I have, I'm blessed to have very senior politicians who have taken a personal interest in my political development. And they, they watch my shows. They listen to me on radio. They call me and say to me, you hit the right chord there, mm. repeat it next time. Or you hit it wrong, don't do it again. This is a big platform. Let me use your platform to do something I've done already on at least three other big platforms. It is to render an unequivocal apology to anybody in my party, in the opposition, in Ghana, that I may have made a comment about or two about that has injured the person's personality or offended the person's sensibilities. Like I said, I'm a young man learning the ropes of this game. We've been overly exuberant at certain points mm -hmm, in time. Mm -hmm. But I, one thing I can assure the people of Ghana is I'm not going to make those mistakes again. Really? No, I've learned from them. And so making those same mistakes again will be that I'm not learning. And mm -hmm. then I don't have to continue in this game. That means I'm not cut out mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. But then we have made mistakes. We've learned from them. I'm rendering an unequivocal apology mm -hmm. for them. And is there one this, is not to say, this is yeah. not to say that we will not make mistakes because mm -hmm. we're human. Mm -hmm. But we will keep learning as the process yeah. goes on. Yeah. Is there one particular statement or one particular incident that where you thought uh, your, your blow was too low? Or <laughs> <laughs> well, there are too many? <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily, but I mean, the one that appears to have really, really, really gotten a lot of even international coverage was um, the comments about Mr. Ivor Green Street, the CPP flag bearer. Yeah. Um, I, I realized that even when he got elected recently and, and strangely that saturday before his election i was on news file and when i was asked who i would place my money on i said him oh, i said really? amongst the candidates wow. he was the best person in terms of policy mm. based on their debate they had held but i realized that setting elements in the opposition tried to go and revive the comments i had made you previously made, yeah. i thought it was it was distasteful i thought that they were rather insulting him i explained the comments i made that day I don't intend to go into that explanation here. The bottom line is myself and Mr. Evergreen Street met about three weeks post that event on a TV program. And we smoothed out the issues. I apologized okay. to him there. Okay. He accepted it. We've moved on. Post that, we have met. And it's been a cordial relationship between us. And so for me, if there's any one thing I want to single out, I mean, the furore about it, they went as far as saying the president should sack me. Then I saw a resignation letter that bore my name, <laughs> that I had resigned. And so I was, then I was called from the office and said, ah, we've heard you've resigned. We've not received your resignation letter. And I said, I don't know what it's you're talking about. It's on social media. Social media is a powerful <laughs> tool. <laughs> and so if, yeah. I, if I'll single out anyone, I mean, the mm. Ivor Green Street issue, mm. and it's taught me not to be ambiguous yeah. in my comments because yeah. I, I tried to be as ambiguous in that comment as possible. But unfortunately, the Ghanaian media is very creative and disingenuous. They found interpretation for my ambiguous statement, and they foisted it down my throat, and it became public, public sentiment. And so right now when I speak, I try to be as clear on what I'm saying, mm. so that if you want to interpret it, mm -hmm. interpret it through Precisely. my lessons. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Tell George, so, so, so how do you see yourself? I mean, you wanted to be, you, you predicted to yourself you'd be in parliament, you are not quite in parliament yet, eh? Not yet. To, yeah, but you're confident. Uh, yeah, there's, 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 there's one battle ahead, but yes. a battle I'm, I'm confident. I, I, told, I told in my, um, my, my victory speech when we were declared, when I was declared candidate, I, I, I said that I was assuring President Mahama of 90% in my constituency and I was going to get 80%. <laughs> my team and I are committed to ensuring we deliver that, 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 mm. that, 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 that result in the constituency. Mm. And so I'm pretty confident about being sworn in on the 7th of January 2017 as a member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram. And so that much I'm confident about. But for me, I see myself as an ordinary guy. I still like to go to the mall and do my own shopping. And the groceries for the house, I, I like to what hang out. What kind of office. husband are you? You um, are... My wife should be answering this question. I guess I, that's true, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, try to be, I try to be a good boy. I try to, to be the best I can. Um, I learned quite a lot from my father. 
who's been married to my mom for almost 40 years. Wow. And so I, I try to learn a lot from, from their relationship. Mm. Uh, my marriage is pretty young, but... How, how young is your marriage? Um, will be four years in August oh, of this yeah, year. Totally in my yeah, you know, <laughs> we, we, we're, we're, we're recently blessed. About six weeks to the election, I was blessed with my first child, a baby boy, Jeremiah Lovely. Andre. Lovely. And I, I believe he brought the victory. So maybe I'm thinking of making sure that Madame gets pregnant and gives birth again. <laughs> 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 the election, maybe another baby will bring me certain victory. But, but I mean, um, I, have, I have a simple family. We live a simple life. And mm. We're content with what God has given to us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, uh, you and E.T., have you, uh, are you now cool? Have um, you see, it takes two people to build a relationship. Let's say, let's say it takes two to tango. And so for me, I'm cool. I'm, I'm okay with him. I mean, I, I believe he's a colossus. He's, he's a massive figure in my party. And so I want to still, I, I have no grudges against him. I cannot speak for him, but for myself, there's no bad blood. You know, like I said in my victory speech, Team JM in Ningo Pram Pram 2016 is E.T. Mensah and Sam George. I don't see it any other way. And I believe that Honorable E.T. Mensah has very little options. He has to campaign for a party he formed. He has to campaign for a party he loves. I mean, he's a, he's a sportsman. Longest ever seven sports minister. And so he knows that in every game, there's a victor. There's, there's, you either win or you lose. Mm. Have you reached out to him? Um, I have tried. I have tried through senior people. Uh, traditional custom means that should, detects that I can't just walk up to him straight, but I need to get some senior people to go and talk to him. And when he is so disposed, he but, will but invite you're young. me You're over. trying to change the, the face of, you know, the face of doing things. You're trying to inject some new youthful, you know, maybe you can try a different style. Just show up by yourself without going through the traditional yeah 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 but at times you need to be careful so that you don't end up with a bullet in your <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, on this particular one i still want to go you the still traditional want to. Way, yeah. okay uh, we, we must blend the tradition yeah. and 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 the the, the new way and he watches this program a lot so if you had to say something to you, what would you say onupa ye no mo e ha mo manye obi sam george je no ne no fe no ne bi o bi mo le mo ne wa pika ke ye no mo ji mo you can't disown me. I'm your boy. You are my master. I'm your errand boy. I mean, how? Uh, you are the boss. I'll keep coming to you for advice. So you, what has gone has gone. Uh, so you are come to the house. I'll come to 35, and then you know. Give me some small jollof and something. <laughs> <laughs> Put your hands together, man. We're gonna, we're gonna get a call from you tonight, man. Trust me. <laughs> Well, Sam, it was good. I, I hope he's not deleted my number yet, but I'm sure he he can. Yeah, even if he's not watching, they'll tell him that mm. you have said this on. Of course, I'm not going to tell him. Okay, okay. In no more jile, no. Let you boss, boss, you back up. Let you boss, boss, you back up. It's for J. Oh, poor. Boss, you back up is J. But let him boss you jile, no. Oh, me fumi eche. Shout out, man. Well, Sam. I just have to bring you here to hang out with you. Yeah, you know? it, 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 it's and a pleasure and an honor. You know, and you see, this is just part of the roller coaster for me. I used to watch KSM on Fridays and say, wow, look at all these big people for the KSM show. I'm sure my son, I'm going to get the tape from you and keep it and show it to him and say, your dad too was a big man sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I was hosting my KSM. Uh, uh, Sam George, uh, show you some love. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. It was a great pleasure. Pleasure? Hi! Come here, Kukumasi Line. Great pressure. Kukumasi Line. But uh, thank you so much and uh, keep in touch and all the best, man. Thank you so much. All right. I hope to be hosted after my parliamentary. Yes! Entry. Yes. I'm booking another appointment. Book another appointment. <laughs> Consider it booked. Thank you. Okay. All right. Stick around, folks. We'll be right back. <laughs>